including those who consider themselves reformers within the royal family or the, the ruling family, uh, that uh, the, basic, the basic rights are not uh, rights but the grants from the king. And, and this appears that uh, the, 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 the reforms are not deeply rooted in this political uh, process during the last ten, 10 years. I think they, they need to reconsider the whole political process in order to, uh, to make the, the major corrections and we know from, 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 uh, from different uh, sources that the Saudis are not happy of what happened in, in Bahrain since 2000. And they are trying to convince the ruling family in Bahrain to, uh, to give a halt to what happened in Bahrain, to the, 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 the political development in Bahrain. So I think uh, if the government in Bahrain and is determined to to go ahead with the reforms, then they they need to reconsider the the legitimate demands of the uh, protesters of the political uh, forces in, in Bahrain, and, and including the uh, especially the the illegitimate naturalization of people from from outside the country. Well, you've, you've just touched on something. Let me get Mr. Rajab back in on this. Now, Mr. Rajab, that has been one of the uh, complaints that uh, a lot of people uh, are making and saying that the Bahraini government bringing in people from the outside and giving them citizenship to sort of change the demographics of what is exactly uh, going on in the area. And also, there are those that say that uh, foreign countries are involved in actually playing a role in the unrest and the crackdown. What, what's your take on this, Mr. Rajab? Well, first of all, I'm going to answer your first question, which I did not answer it, if the Shia were trying to overthrow the government. And this is it's just impossible. Because to overthrow the government, you need to have a military. And for your information, the percentage of Shia in the military, Bahrain military, is 0%. Bahrain military, although the Shia represent 70 to 75% of the population, but in the army, they are 0%. So it's just impossible. And most of the institution, governmental institution, at least we have 11 governmental institutions with zero uh, Shia percent. Now it comes to naturalization. Yes, according to the documentation list we have in the Bahrain Center for Human Rights, we have many people who lived in Bahrain for the past 10 of years, 60, 70, 80 years. They were not giving Bahraini nationality because they are either from Iranian background or from a Shia background. At the same time, we're Bahrain bringing tens of thousands of people, tribes from Jordan, from uh, Syria, and from Yemen, and from Balochistan and Pakistan, and employing them in our army and in our police, and granting them, natural, and granting them a Bahraini citizen. This is what is going on now. We have a new, uh, new, uh, new people in Bahrain, and they are slowly, slowly getting, uh, becoming a majority and holding most of the government jobs, and she are kept in the world services ministry, and, and there is, they are not working in anywhere, they are not allowed to work in anywhere. This is the problem, and I'm afraid very soon it is going to be uh, a minority. This is creating hard feelings, this is creating anger, this is creating tension among people. People are angry, not Shias only are angry, Shias and Sunni are angry. They are not happy about bringing people from outside for, for secretarian Purpose Mr. Rajab, let me Shia. interrupt you right there. You said bringing people from outside. Where are they coming from? These people that you're saying are becoming yes, naturalized are, citizens. Course, Where are they coming, coming from? from uh, first, tribal, tribal background. They're coming from Jordan and Syria and Yemen and from Pakistan, Baluch, specifically Balochistan. And, uh, and of course, with all respect to those nationality, which we, which we, which we, we respect them so much. And those also, they are sympathizing with our nation. But our government are misusing those people also by bringing them and involving, involving them in a sectarian problem, conflict in Bahrain. And they come, they know not, nothing about this. Yeah, but they bring them from Jordan and Syria and Yemen and some Egypt, some Sudan, and mostly from Balochistan and Pakistan. Now, Mr. Rajab, you said that, uh, for example, in the military, there's zero percent of Shia, and in several other uh, segments of the society or government offices, zero percent Shia. Are these written laws on the book that no Shias are allowed in these positions, or exactly how is this laid out in Bahrain? 
I cannot get you. Can you repeat your question? I said you had talked about, you mentioned that there's zero percent Shias, for example, in the military and other sectors of the government. Are these actual laws on the book, written laws on the book that prevent Shias, or is there something else going no, no, on that they're filtered? No, there is no law uh, uh, allow discrimination. In fact, if you see the Bahraini constitution, it is against, uh, against discrimination. But in the practice, they don't employ, not only that, Shia are not allowed to live in 45% of Bahraini land. 45% of Bahraini land, a Shia people, they cannot build a mosque, they cannot buy a house in there. There is no law, say, such thing. But to buy a house in this 45% of the Bahraini land, you have to get a permission from the royal court. And once you go to the royal court and ask for permission to live in there, you, uh, they will not give you as far as you are Shia. Of course, they know you are Shia either from your name or from the area where you are staying. It is discrimination in everywhere. And this is making the situation very tense. And governments were criticized by international organizations, by many friends, by many people. But instead of solving those problems, they thought of putting these people in jail. It could be easier for them. Okay, and on that note, I am so sorry, but we are out of time. Hopefully, we will have another program dealing with this subject. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Nabil Rajab, President of Bahrain Center for Human Rights, and Dr. Fuad Ibrahim, uh, author of the book, The Shias of Saudi Arabia. I'd like to also thank you viewers, as always, for joining us for a close-up look at today's top stories. Please join us right here, same time, tomorrow. I'm Marzia Hashimi, signing off from Tehran. Thanks, and goodbye.